So, uh, today is the first uh, lecture of uh, our class, Ergonomics. Now, we need to first define what is ergonomics. And if you uh, look around in our world, all the objects that you see are what? Designed for human use. Everything what you see around you, uh, this table, this chair, this cup, this pen, everything is designed <coughs> for whom? For human use, for the human. So, uh, everything in our world is designed taking the human or the human body into consideration. Uh, so this is the base of ergonomics, understanding the human body in all its ways. Physically, uh, dimension-wise, psychologically, in all ways, okay? So, by understanding the human body, the more you understand, the better you understand the human, the better your designs will be. Well, since all, like most of the designs that we see are for human use, of course you need to understand this uh, human being as much as possible. If you don't understand, you don't know anything about the human, how can you design uh, in a correct way for this human to use this product? You cannot, okay? So, understanding the human is crucial for better designs, and this is where ergonomics uh, basically enters. Here are some examples of everyday products. All of these things are designed for humans. So, if we don't understand the human, the target, basically the target of our designs, the main target, okay? We cannot design these objects or any object correctly, okay? So this is crucial, understanding the human. <coughs> so, ergonomics helps us to understand the human body better so that we can design better designs uh, to fit this human, whoever it's going to be, okay? Now, ergonomics has two different uh, namings. You can, ergonomics, you already know, by the class name, and another word is human factors engineering. So if you come across this or this, they basically mean the same thing, okay? But in some countries, they use human factors engineering, and in some countries, they call it ergonomics. So it has the same meaning, basically. And uh, ergonomics, as a word, it comes from the Greek language, meaning ergon and nomoi, work and natural laws. Okay? So ergonomics is a study, basically, a science uh, of designing products, whatever products this can be. Okay. Uh, anything that is for the human to be better adapted to the human body and fit. These are important words. Adapted and fit with all the needs of the human and the human body. So when you're designing something, you're not designing uh, just because uh, it's fun to design. And you're not designing, if I design this cup, I will not design it the way I want. I will design it the way my target group of people, of humans, I will design it for them, so that this product fit with them, with their body measurements, with their needs. It's not about you in design. It's not about what color do you like, what shapes do you like, what, no, no, no. It's about the humans that you're designing for, which are called the target group of people, okay? You need to understand their needs and you're designing for them, okay? So, adapt and fit with all the needs uh, of the uh, target group of people so that the humans can perform tasks and use the product safely, efficiently, and comfortably. So what is perform tasks mean? Anything you design is designed to perform certain tasks with it. The human to perform certain tasks. So if you design a pen, 
for example, the main task that the human will perform using this product is uh, to write with it. That's the main task. If you have another product, okay? A cup, for example. What's this for? What tasks do you perform with this cup? Mm -hmm. To put something inside it and drink. Okay? So this is a task. So everything you design is designed with certain tasks that the human needs to perform while using this product. Okay? Uh, so while performing these tasks, the human needs to be uh, able to do it safely, to be safe. You never want the human injured in any way. Efficiently, to do it efficiently, the task, and comfortably, to be comfortable while using uh, the product, whatever it is. Okay? When we're talking about small here products, it's, it can be uh, anything. It can be the classroom here is a product actually. Okay? So how is this classroom designed? It needs to be comfortable for... <laughs> the human use. How is this chair designed? How is this door designed? How, uh, this building, all of it, okay? So, it must be safe, it must be comfortable, efficient, whatever, all of these things, okay, uh, need to be met. So this is, all of this is basically defining what ergonomics is. So, it is the study, what uh, ergonomics is the study of Inter, of the interaction between the human body, the products, and the surrounding environment. So, uh, there is a human, there is a product, pro or products, and there is an environment, the surrounding. So, there is a constant interaction between the human, the products, the environment. So, when I'm, uh, for example, taking this pen in my hand, I'm actually interacting with it. There is an interaction between me and this product now. When I take this cup, there is an interaction. We will talk about these things more later, okay, in detail. But basically, ergonomics is the study of interaction between the human, the products designed, and the environment surrounding you. You are always in an environment. Now you are in this classroom, this is an environment, the surrounding. Uh, if you go outside, there is another environment, totally different than this classroom. When you go to your home, again, a different kind of environment. So, uh, these three things always interact. The main aim and goal of ergonomics is to design products in a people-centered way. Again, we already uh, said that, that the human is the main target. The main, the most important thing that needs to be focused on in design. You cannot focus on what you like. You need to focus on the people you're designing for, what they want, what they need, how they will be safe, how they will be comfortable using this product. This is crucial to understand. Okay? People-centered, meaning the person or the people are the center of attention in the design. So, the target user takes what? A central and most important role in anything you design. Now, there is an official definition of ergonomics by the International Ergonomics Association. It is defined as a scientific discipline. Ergonomics is a science, okay? Concerned with the understanding of interactions among humans and other elements of a system. Now this is explained a little bit in a uh, complex way, but it's what we explain. So there is always an interaction between people and the designed products. We will talk about systems later in other lectures, so you understand what it is. And the profession that applies the theory, principles, data, methods to design in order what, to optimize human well-being. This means optimize, meaning make it as best as possible what the human well-being, how the human feels while using a certain product. This is the, the main, main goal in the end. But how do you make a human to feel well? 
to be happy. Well, if the human is safe, uh, for example, while using a certain product, if it's comfortable, if it's efficient, if it's easy to understand, and, 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 this will make the human, in the end, happy to use this product and cause a well-being. Now, ergonomics is really a complicated science. It's complicated. Like, our class is uh, one class, one class in ergonomics. But ergonomics you can study in the university for four years, a bachelor's degree only in ergonomics. It is very, very wide science with a lot of details. And when you think about that you need to cover all the possible situations, it needs really years to study ergonomics fully, you know? Uh, especially since ergonomics uh, uses many of these disciplines, these are not all, but the, the major disciplines used in ergonomics to basically create uh, certain guidelines that, for example, designers can use in design, certain things, do this this way or that way, so that you can create a better design in the end. All of these guidelines, uh, you can find complete books, for example, uh, with these kind of guidelines. Uh, they are drawn from many disciplines. Like, for example, uh, anthropometry, biomechanics, physiology and medicine, psychology, engineering, design, and so on. Okay? So, all of these are disciplines on their own. Like, if you study psychology, how complicated is that? And uh, lengthy discipline, engineering, biomechanics, anthropometry, all of these things. Ergonomics uses these sciences to extract from them the useful things that can be used uh, and principles can be created which other people, like designers, can take and use in their designs. Now, ergonomics is a little bit similar to design in some ways. How? Uh, like we as designers, we also draw our knowledge from many disciplines. We are late. Very late. And absent. So, we as designers, we also use many disciplines to actually design. Like what, for example? Well, uh, you cannot be a designer without knowing the psychology, some psychology. You cannot be a designer without knowing technology. You cannot be a designer by... So, as a designer, you need to know a lot of things. A lot of things from many different areas, from many different fields, disciplines. Okay? So this also makes design a very complicated field. You think design is simple? No, it is not. You need to know psychology, engineering, you need to know this and that. And from all of these fields, you are drawing information to design. For example, if I'm designing a certain device, maybe I am not the inventor of the technology. I will use technology available in my design. So I'm actually drawing from the engineering field, taking something and putting it in my design. So, ergonomics is similar in this way. It uses many disciplines that they use to draw knowledge from to create useful uh, guidelines for, uh, not only for designers, for anyone who uh, needs to use ergonomics. And it's very widely used. Okay? Now later we will discuss a little bit more about uh, these also, not all of them, uh, but the most important in uh, next lectures. So, all of, all of these different disciplines, okay, what, uh, what do they basically help the ergonomist or the designer? They will help better to understand the roof, the target user, the human, again, okay, of a new design. So, you will understand the human, for example, better in terms of body size, body shape, the strength, the mobility, sensory uh, sensitivity, mental ability, and so on, and so on, and so on. Okay? The more you understand about the human, the target user, the better your designs, and the opposite is true. The less you understand, the worse the outcome will be. Like, you cannot design something for someone that you know nothing about. Like, for example, 
uh, it's uh, like we cannot put the humans all in one category. For example, uh, you want to design something for children, for a specific age group, but you know nothing about children. You don't know how they think, you don't know their body measurements, you don't know anything about their behavior. How can you design something that they would like and they would understand? Impossible. Okay? So, this is crucial to have a better understanding of as much as possible human characteristics. So, the more characteristics, the more you understand about the human, the better the designs will be in the end. Of course, all the fields of design use ergonomics. Otherwise, if you design something without the consideration of ergonomics, uh, it will uh, most of the time be a failure because you are ignoring a big part of the design uh, process. So, interior design, product design, fashion design, everything, graphic design, everything uses ergonomics. Imagine you're a fashion designer and you don't know you're a fashion designer for, let's say, uh, uh, adult females' clothes. And unfortunately, you don't know anything about their sizes, you don't know about the body, you don't know anything. So, it will be a failure. Okay? The clothes will not be comfortable. They will not fit the human. Imagine you're a graphic designer and you have no idea about how the human eyes work how humans see uh, colors, for example, uh, text, what is the psychology of when I see a specific text type, a font type, what happens in my brain, you don't know. You don't know uh, uh, anything about that. How can you design correctly? And these are just small examples. Okay? Uh, look at this, for example, some, some of these examples. Notice these signs and symbols, these. They're designed in a specific way so that anyone from any country, from any background, any language, looks at them, they understand what it is. But if the designer of these have no idea about human psychology, meaning uh, they didn't apply any ergonomics in their design, then the result will not be good a good design and nobody will understand it. Look at this shape of this product and the size of these controls here, the buttons, okay? Why are they so big? And why is this sp specific strange shape here? Well, that's because the designer of this uh, applied ergonomics, meaning they understand the target group of people very well. For whom is this product designed? This is designed, for example, for the elderly, the old people that have, for example, uh, problems in their uh, physiology, like, for example, shaky hands. Imagine you have a shaky hand, like, uh, you know, a, a certain type of disease, and you're trying to use a, a mobile. It's going to be a problem. So this shape helps the hand become more stable. And also the big, big buttons, uh, help elderly people who have problems with their vision to see. But uh, if, if the designer of this don't know anything about the, the humans mm -hmm. he's designing for, it will not be a successful design. The same thing with anything. Okay? If you're designing an interior, but you don't know who is going to use this interior, in what way it's going to be a problem. Now, how did ergonomics emerge? How did it start, uh, ergonomics as a, as a science? Now, since the Stone Age, since old, old days, okay, people have been designing objects which are functional, useful, and made somehow to fit with the human. So, if you look at these very, very old tools, they, they have a design, and you can tell they are designed to fit the human. So, if you want to use this, you can tell, ah, okay, here is where I have to put my hand. And it's designed in a way you can grip it, even though the materials are very, very basic. Okay? So, uh, but uh, 
did, did these people in the Stone Age use ergonomics uh, to design these? No, no. They didn't have a science called ergonomics, they didn't have books, they didn't have anything. The word ergonomics as a term started uh, around 100 years ago, about a century, not uh, not long time, okay? As a, as a science, okay, it emerged. Uh, but before that, okay, how did people design before that? Before ergonomics, by trial and error. So, they design, for example, they make a tool and they test it, okay? Uh, for example, give it to someone, uh, is, is this okay, is this comfortable, can you do the task with it? And they, they test it. If, if it's okay, great. If not okay, go back, redesign, re, redo, okay? And so it's trial and error. You try something, you design, you try it. If it's not good, you go back, you redesign, and so on. In a very, very basic way, okay? So this is how it was in the past. Before ergonomics uh, really became a science and uh, books with guidelines came out for designers to use. So, but now today, in our day, we cannot use trial and error to design. Why? Why can't we just design something and, okay, if we make a mistake, we go back, we redesign and so Well, because the products have become very complicated. Like, if you see those hand tools, look at them. They're very, very <coughs> simple, very basic materials, very simple. But today, uh, today we have millions of materials, millions, and so many parts, and manufactured in complicated ways. Like if you look at this pen, just one pen, how many parts does it have? This is metallic, this is plastic. This is one part with actually two or three parts attached to each other. When you open it, you will find one, two, three, four, five, so many parts inside, okay? Each part is made, manufactured alone, and then all of these parts are assembled together into a pen. So imagine if the designer of this simple pen makes a mistake with the design in any of these parts. The whole process has to go back to, to, to to stage one, okay, to redesign, fix the problem, uh, and go through the manufacturing process, which can be very expensive. So it's the cost, it's too costly nowadays to make mistakes. So you as a designer, if you design something and you make a mistake, it's very expensive to go back, fix it, remake it, okay, it's a big problem. Uh, so no way you can make mistakes, no way, okay, as a designer. This puts a huge, huge pressure and importance on the designer. So you need to have really a good amount of knowledge and focus on the details. If you just take it, oh, yeah, you know, whatever, uh, you are not a fine artist. Remember, you are a designer, a fine artist, you know, I can draw a picture. I can draw a painting for me. Uh, you know, I like to use these shades. I like to use these colors. I, I will make whatever I want. And I don't care if you understand it <laughs> or, you know, if it has any use. It's beautiful, I will put it on the wall. But as designer, you cannot do that. You cannot. You have to always understand the humans, the target users, their characteristics, their needs, their everything. How are they going to use this, whatever you're designing, okay? So, if you make a mistake, it will be too costly to go back and change your design. So, no trial and error in our times. The first time the word ergonomics as a word was used was in the publication by this guy, whose name is really difficult to read. Uh, so, he wrote a book in 1857, The Science of Work, okay? Uh, so this was the, the first time when ergonomics actually started to be used as a, as, a, as a word, okay, as ergonomics. But it was not until the 1900s that really the first concepts of ergonomics were applied, applied, you see? 
It's different to read about something in a book as a theory and to apply. So it's actually these principles were starting to get applied in actual uh, situations. To, uh, for example, for workers to perform better and more productively in, for example, factories. In, in the past, you know, everything was mostly, uh, there were no computers, no uh, technology, uh, like today we have. Uh, everything is uh, either handmade or in a factory. There was, of course, fa factories, but workers actually work in the factory. So uh, some principles were started to be applied to them so that they can be more uh, safer, for example, uh, to do the work more efficiently, to be more comfortable, and so on. But this was still in the very, very beginning. Uh, the real ergonomics started to develop during the Second World War. This was when the, the, the real ergonomics started developing real principles, uh, started to be developed and put into practice. So, uh, during the war, what happened for, this, uh, for ergonomics to start developing in a fast manner as a science? Well, uh, during the wars, as you know, they used airplanes, you know, all kinds of uh, machinery, all kinds of uh, uh, stuff, and a lot of accidents started happening. You know, a lot of accidents due to poor design, bad design, and these problems started emerging when the humans, when the people started using these machines. like. Cannot use something slowly, or you know, like you have time to. It's it's a it's a very very fast paced environment, and mistakes a lot of mistakes can happen, and a lot of problems. So, uh, ergonomics started developing during this period. To how how can they redesign machinery, airplanes, whatever, to be more safer, uh, more comfortable? The humans will be able to use it. Uh, in a better way, okay? Also, in the factories, you know, this is what factories used to look like, like 100 years ago. Uh, during the wars, people had to um, produce, make, uh, in, a, in a high speed. Like, you cannot just sit and work uh, the way you like. They work from morning till evening, hard work, hard labor, and uh, in environments, as you can see, that are not very safe. And as a result, also a lot of issues, problems, accidents started happening. So the uh, Industrial Fatigue Research Board was formed in the 1920s, and they started carrying out research into uh, basically fatigue problems in industry. So fatigue means getting tired. So people were getting tired, and when you get tired, you start making more mistakes. More mistakes. So how can they solve these issues? How can they make people perform better, work more, but more efficiently, and without getting that tired? So all of this research started emerging, and principles were formed uh, over a period of time. So the science, ergonomics, it didn't emerge like suddenly, you know, like yesterday we don't have, today we have. No, it developed over a hundred years till today. It's developing. Till today it's developing, you know. So how can they keep improving and improving and improving? This is one example from uh, almost 100 years ago, a case study about a scissor, okay, a scissor, uh, used by factory workers. So people were in the factories cutting, uh, you know, uh, uh, materials, uh, uh, basically making things out of them. So what happened here is that uh, the workers, when they used this scissor many, many, many times for long hours each day, uh, the, the areas on the hands where the pressure points are, started getting injured. So, uh, one of the owners of these factories decided to basically improve the design of the scissors. So he took the scissors, he put plaster on them, on very thin in certain areas, and he let the workers 
use this product. After that, we took the scissors and see where is the areas where it has blood, skin, you name it, okay, attached to it, uh, to see where the pressure points are between product and user, user hand, okay? And after he found the areas where the problems are, we tried to redesign a better shape of a scissor to be more safe, more comfortable to use. Now the problem, the problem during that time was the limitation of the material. Like the scissors were made, were made out of metal, completely metal, okay? They did not have plastic. Plastic was not available. Plastic came after, many years after, okay? So today, <coughs> look at these scissors from today, these are plastic. The area where your hand is is plastic. And sometimes you can find rubber put here to make it even more softer and comfortable. Uh, and look at these shapes, these organic shapes. You cannot make these out of metal. So he was limited in, in what he could do a hundred years ago. Today, uh, we can easily make all kinds of organic shapes using the materials available to us. This needs to be considered because the material uh, can greatly impact the design of something. What material you use is like half of the importance of anything you do in the design. It could be the wrong material or the right material, okay? So, uh, let me move on. Here is another uh, famous designer from a uh, hundred years ago. What did he say? Okay. We bear in mind that the object, meaning the product, we are working on is going to be used by people in some way. We already know that, okay? If the point of contact between the product and the people becomes a point of friction. Now, every product, everything you use have a point of contact. This pen have a certain points of contact between me, my hand, my fingers, and the product. If I use this cup, it's a different way, different points of contact. If I touch this mouse, I'm using it in a different way than if I'm holding a pen. There is different points of contact. Okay, these are products that are handheld, but what about these eyeglasses? Okay, here we have points of contact between the nose, the ears, uh, some, okay, so it depends on which, where on the body and how it will be used. There are different points of contact. We will talk about this again later on. So, if this point of contact becomes a point of friction, then the designer has failed. If it becomes a friction point, okay, it needs to be comfortable. So, if people are made safer, efficient, comfortable, and happier, of course, then, uh, while using the product, then, in general, the designer has succeeded in the design. Nice summary. Now, when we look at ergonomics today, it has become a complicated field, as I already said. So, from, like, 100 years ago, the knowledge has increased, the information has increased, we can now find a lot of books. It depends on the area you're focusing, focusing in. Like if you're interior designer, you will find ergonomics books about interior design only. Like for example, interior spaces, uh, circulation spaces, all these kinds of details. And if you're a product designer, you will find books in that. If you're a, so uh, the, the ergonomics has become a wide, wide field, okay? And uh, it's still developing till today, okay? Still, not everything is perfect. Still more things can be improved. Now, why is it still developing? Because our world is also a changing world. You know, we live in a changing world. Like what we used to do 10 years ago, how the world was, the technology now, it's very different. If you go back 20 years ago, 30 years ago, it was very different. We didn't even have mobiles. Like, for example, me, I am not that old. Like, you know, not that old. I'm not 100 years old yet. But in my time, when I was your age, we didn't have any mobiles. We didn't have 
flash memories, we didn't have uh, home computers, we didn't have anything. We had those old diskettes that can uh, save uh, very little information and very difficult to use. And uh, no mobile, no nothing. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so can you imagine? Like it, it wasn't like a long, long time ago. <laughs> it was when I was your age. I, we, we, nobody had a mobile. Nobody. Even internet, nobody had at home. It was something extremely rare. So, this is an example of how quickly the world is changing. Like what will happen after another 20 years? Who knows, okay? So, ergonomics needs also to change and develop with a changing world. For example, today in our world, automation, automation has become like a new normal. What does it mean? Like, most of the work is being done by machines. Machines do, robots do the work for us. So the human has been turned now, this is not applicable to everybody and all the countries and all societies, but I'm talking about the developed world. Most of the work is done by machines, robots, and people are turned into controllers of these machines. I am just controlling a machine. Even this computer, this is a machine. I am controlling it. I want to use a 3D program to design something. But who is controlling this 3D program? Me. I am putting the information inside. For example, okay? So, people are turned into controllers of machines. And this, for example, created a lot of new challenges. Like in the past, in the past, what happened? What, what used to happen? Most of the people used to work physically. You know, physically. You, you, you move your body all day long. You, you do everything with your body. But today, you sit on this chair, like you do now, for hours and hours and hours, okay? And you sit here, listen to the lectures. You go home, you sit on a chair, do the work on the computer or draw, okay? Sitting, 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 sitting. So what's happening? New challenges uh, happen. New problems to the human body. So, uh, so today we, f we face a lot of <coughs> problems in the back back pain, spine problems, that's because of the sitting too much, okay? So, ergonomics has to develop with a changing world. As the world changes, ergonomics develops, adds new principles, and so on, to fit uh, the new world, to, uh, to keep making whatever designs are created to be comfortable for the human use, even in these circumstances. So, summary of ergonomics. It's what we uh, already discussed, but uh, in a summary way. So, ergonomics is about making sure that there is a good fit between people and the things they interact with. What are the things they interact with? Products, okay? Everything that is designed around us. This could include the objects or the environments they live in. So, ergonomics must be used in every design you design. If you ignore this part, consider the design a failure. Because you're ignoring the most important element, the human, okay? The target user. So, ergonomics gives the users the following general benefits. Comfort, safety, ease of use, Meaning if you have a product, uh, to be easy for use, not complicated, and enjoyment. Okay, all of these uh, are very important uh, principles that we need to apply always. Uh, basic main benefits that ergonomics brings. So, if you apply ergonomics, it can contribute to the solution of a lot of problems that we see today in our daily lives. So, uh, a lot of accidents that happen are because the product and the human, there is a problem between the fit, okay, between 
the product, the human. There is a problem in the relationship, the relationship between a product and a human. This relationship, you must always strive to improve. And how to improve? Well, the answers you will find in ergonomics. Ergonomics will give you principles, guidelines to follow that could help you improve the relationship between the human and the product so that accidents or less accidents happen. Okay? Now, we finish the lecture for today and we have our first assignment. Every lecture, after every class, we have a homework to do. Okay? So, the first assignment. Find three items. Three items, meaning products, okay? In your daily life, that you believe, that you believe applied ergonomics in some way or another, okay? To create a better design. So you will find three products that you think the designer of this product applied ergonomics in some way to improve the design, to create a better fit between this product and the human. You need to take clear photos, as many as needed, okay, to uh, clarify whatever points you're making. It must be a product, product, an object that you have in front of you, that you can photograph, not from the internet photos. Be careful. It is something that you, you should touch, you should uh, be able to, you know, take it, look at it, uh, feel it, okay? So, three items. Now, point number three. Explain and show which one of the following ergonomic benefits were provided for the user and explain how. For each product, you explain how, first of all, if they were used, and then how. So, comfort, safety, ease of use, enjoyment, if they were not provided, you will also say. For example, this product is not safe. The, the one who designed it did not design it in a safe way. Okay, why? Explain. Why is it not safe? Or if you say, it's designed in a safe way, why is it safe? What makes it safe? Okay? Or, what makes it uh, enjoy, enjoyable to use? So, for each of these points, you need to explain for each of the products. Now, because it's our first assignment, I will need to go over very important stuff. Now, for the next assignments, I will not repeat this area, because it's the same, okay? You must use the word program, the word, okay? Now, after you, you write, you type uh, your, uh, you know, uh, assignment, you must save it as PDF, and when you submit it to me, you will submit it printed. Printed, page size A4. I don't want any strange page sizes. A4, the standard on Word, okay? Staple papers together at the upper left corner. So, look, this is like this, papers together, and it will be stapled here. Nothing fancy, nothing uh, spirally, nothing, okay? No, I want it extremely simple. The papers that you wrote, stapled at the left corner, here, just, okay? Uh, now, you have a cover page, the first page. The first one is called the cover page. It must have class name, Assignment number, like assignment number one, okay? Uh, student name. Uh, it must be. Now, so this is on the cover page. Do not forget any of this. If you forget to put assignment number, I will not mark it. Okay, at all. So, uh, these requirements must be here. Now, how you organize? Uh, you need to experiment a little bit. The, the design needs to be nice and beautiful and clear and legible and in everywhere as best as possible. Because this is an ergonomics project as well. You know, when you give me your report, I will look at it. 
if I find, oh, the font is kind of very unclear, it's too small or too huge. For example, the student used too many colors, I cannot understand anything. The work is not organized. Um, for example, pictures, here the student put small picture, here put big picture, one time here, one time there. No organization, no structure. Uh, it will be confusing, right? So, sometimes in the future assignments you will find that uh, maybe to design a table format will be more better, where you have pictures from one side, text from the other side, uh, bullet points. You know, the more clear and beautiful you can make it, the better. Consider this ergonomics project. Now, you don't have the knowledge, but do your best. Do your best to make the best possible design that you can. Okay? For now. Uh, so, now, the report, after you finish this homework, you will not submit it to the next class. No submission. The submissions will come on the midterm. You will have nine reports to do. Nine homeworks that, together, at one time, you will give it to me on the midterm. This is your midterm exams. Be careful, okay? The midterm exam. Nine reports. So assignment one, assignment two, assignment three, and so on. This is the midterm. But you need to start work on it now, today, tomorrow, because next class we have a new assignment. And a new, and a new. And you will not finish if you delay. You will not finish and you will get, start getting confused as we enter more and more information. Any questions? Okay. <laughs>